do is look at basically the dynamics of how we as community and voluntary organization members um, develop relationships with people who have loads of cash to dole out. You think of any community and voluntary activity, for example, tonight, where this was run basically for nothing, and the amount of um, positive effects it has about people, you know, learning about Becky um, and Debra's laying down, down stores or painting things on, on planes to make them look more interesting, whatever, or being able to do things. We're learning things, we're being entertained, we're hearing things, we're coming across people. All of that potentially could be supported by public finances or finances from um, state agencies or from voluntary trusts. I went and looked at why the funding relationship works well and when it doesn't work well. And I started off with the idea of funding application being a cycle. It should start with an idea, proceed with the search for cash, and end with the voluntary of community of getting that money and spending it. The reality is that when you look for money, we are in a good funk, we are in a panic, we have to get money in to pay for a certain thing, either a capital cost or something that's going to cost money year after year. And how we get money together to do the things we want to do that we support and we believe in is really an art that needs to be pursued. So my first idea is that you have to have an idea. It has to be a great idea. All the dull ones have been tried and funded and they've already been funding. You're competing with people who already are doing what you were setting out to do. It's, it would be very important that it's an idea that reflects what you do as an organization. And it's a good thing for organizations anyway to sit down and develop new ideas about things that might happen in the future. The um, value of doing that is that if you look back at your aims as an organization, oh, this isn't something too preachy, that sounds like a sermon on Sunday, but I'll continue as I started. Um, if you go back and look at your aims as an organization and dream up projects that could happen, and if you believe that the funding will come for, for it at some time, you're going to end up with ideas in the can. And your idea, this, the, idea the guy who had this idea, he probably was told, you're wasting wood, you know, what's this wrong thing you want to develop, you know, who you looking at, never take on. The most good ideas, most great ideas, have that initial reaction. People resist new ideas because they haven't been thought of before. There's a certain amount of resentment, might be a bit of jealousy. There might be kind of thing of, what the do you think you are? So new ideas, if they reflect what you are in an organization, can energize your organization and can attract the kind of money that you're looking for. The second rule that I would call is that we need to know everything about money. We need to know who has it, where it is, how much money people have to get, why they give it. You must understand that when funding is given, there's always an agenda. Money is almost never given selflessly. The people who give it want something to happen that reflects back on, on them. I think you need to be careful about how you match your organization with the funding agency you're looking for money from. You don't want to be looking for money from sources which will change your reputation. You don't want another organization to bask in the glory of your successes. You don't want to give credibility to attractive organizations that you don't that you wouldn't donate money to yourself. So having a harmonious relationship with the people who are going to fund you is something that's going to be a benefit to you in the long term. And money, I think, genuinely does grow on trees in the sense that even in these times of incredible recessionary pressures, the only shortage is of good ideas. Money will follow the ideas if they're put together through and if the people really believe in what they're uh, believe in the ideas that they're trying to um, get turned into actions. So my third rule is basically to be good at pushing together funding packages, being able to foresee, predict how much money this thing will cost, be able to imagine what's going to uh, be subject to unforeseeable changes, and be able to give genuine figures. For example, if you're employing a fifth staff person, you don't say, actually, I should have to cost another 50 euros in phone bills. You get a quarter of the existing phone bill. Well, multiply that by 50 and 50 euros. No, you don't maximum, you don't it. And you also have to be able to say to people who are looking at your funding, how did you get that figure? If you puff up figures, or if you create figures, or if you use one of the creative um, ideals to put figures on the page, the people at the other end of the funding application see through that very, very easily. And they'll, they'll see that your funding application is suspect in at least one area, so maybe it's suspect in every area. So, being able to put together a credible budget to the people who make decisions is going to mean so much in terms of building up your credibility, because in some cases it will be all they know about you. So, the next rule that I've got to say is, if the style comes with around in time, is that people who are giving out the money know an awful lot less about what you're doing than you do. Often they don't know very much about your sector at all. You're the expert, they know that, and they should know that you know that. And if you are um, an organization that's got the integrity to be able to say, I'm going to stand over my idea, even if it doesn't match exactly the funding criteria, funders do respect that. If you can imagine um, 
the relationship between you and the funder as being one of mutual dependence or interdependence. If you weren't there, funding agency officials, funding agency staff, they have no function in life that you fulfill a need that they've got. And if your funding application lands on their desk with all the boxes ticked and everything done in a way in which they don't have to make a decision, it means that your, your result, your success is already predicted. And I've chosen this slide because even though they may be richer than you and stronger than you, you can still play at the same rules. And in this slide I picked it because the little guy who stands his point towards us has got enough self-respect to take on this hulk of a brute to be able to take on. And that, in a way, the funding relationship, if it's built on that mutual respect, you will get much further in terms of convincing people who want to make the decision for your activity. Here's what I would say is that funding agencies like to get something in return, not just the money spent well. They're associated with an organization that has the veneer of success, the veneer of, of positive experiences, people who are associated with the likes of him. Um, originally, when I clicked on that image, I thought of Johnny Depp, I looked twice, but I thought of the bill, so I leave him there. Um, people like GC, people like presidents, people like prime ministers, um, leaders in the world, the economics, the arts, if they are associated with your organization, it doesn't necessarily mean that you endorse them or their beliefs or their positions, but the perception would be that they endorse you, and funders like that sense of security. Sixth rule I'd say is that when funders give you money, they're taking a gamble. No matter how well structured you are, no matter how strong your history has been, they still might cock up laudably. So when they're taking a punt, it's as well for them to know that other people are taking a punt on you. So if you're looking for huge amounts of money to fund a certain activity, even if you've got a small amount from another source, that covers their ass in the event of things going very up later on. So when you have money from one organization, it's much, much easier to convince another organization, look, they did it, they can't all be fooled, so I can't do a bit. And I'm thinking of one particular funding application for just over a million euro. It started with a 25,000 euro donation by one organization. That's a drop in the ocean, the overall um, scheme of things, but it's worked wonders later on in trying to prize cash from other people. So finally, I'd just like to introduce you to this person on the left, who is my fictional funding official, who is a sick person. It's useful to think of them as being unwell and that they need to be healed by a good, properly prepared, well-presented, properly touted of funding application. <laughs> and I would like to say that it actually heals them. That they feel well. Thank you very much.